Hey guys, it's Sasha. Last night, Netflix released their Q3 results and the results were better than expectations and Netflix stock rallied. It's up 15% this morning as I'm recording this video. And I wanted to dive into the Netflix results because I found it very interesting how positive the market is taking these results by Netflix, given the stock was dumped so hard over the last two quarters. Is Netflix the precursor to a great Q3 earnings season or are there things buried in these results that make them not quite what they seem well. Netflix reported $7.926 billion in revenue for Q3, which was not only better than expectations, but $88 million better than Netflix's own forecast from Q2. And the one thing that really surprised analysts is the net income, because Netflix was guiding for $961 million in net income for the quarter, and it turned into $1.4 billion instead. 45% higher than they expected. And because revenue was only marginally better, the extra profit came from lower costs, which is interesting. We'll get to that bit a little later because Netflix has been spending big on content. They put out Stranger Things season four, which proved very popular, and they published The Gray Man, an action movie that had a budget of $200 million. They were very proud of it. They have a whole section in this shareholder letter just about that movie. Netflix estimates that 100 118 million households watched the movie, which works out at about $1.70 per household, which is pretty expensive for just one piece of content. Now, Netflix isn't alone in spending eye-watering amounts of money on content. Great Point Studios just opened huge $500 million film studios in Yonkers, New York. And Athena Studios announced a 350,000 square foot expansion to its already massive facility in Georgia. The race for eyeballs in online streaming services is heating up as in July, for the first time ever, streaming outpaced cable and broadcast viewership. You would of course know all of this if you read The Daily Upside, who are the sponsors of today's video. I read this very article on The Daily Upside just a few days ago, and you can see that the news stories here are succinct and on point. You get bite-sized nuggets of super useful information and insight written by a team of finance professionals to bring you unbiased news with a trademark size serving of humor. You can sign up for the completely free Daily Upside newsletter using my link in the description, and it really is completely free. There is no upsell to a premium version that will cost you money and you'll get a fantastic email once a day in the morning so you can check out the most prominent financial news over a cup of coffee. The articles tend to focus on data, insight and analysis to showcase the critical information about breaking and developing business news stories. So you can get this quick breakdown on the numbers behind Disney eating Netflix's lunch and then read about Tom Brady investing in a pickleball franchise. All you have to do is sign up with your email address using my link below and you'll start getting one email a day for of useful information. And if for whatever reason you don't love it, you can always unsubscribe. Make sure you do sign up for free using my link in the description. So looking at the Netflix results from last night, I can't help but feel that the jubilation may be coming a little bit too early. Investors seem to have forgotten the very reasons why Netflix stock has been decimated, why it's been plummeting since the Q1 results came out in April. I do have to hand it to Netflix though. The shareholder letter is very upfront in acknowledging some of the issues and acknowledging the competition. They've added a new section that wasn't here right at the top. And it says, we beat on income and membership numbers. We'll look at the membership numbers in more detail in a second. We made a boatload of expensive content. We are launching the ad supported membership plans in Q4. We'll talk about that in a second as well. And then we have two big bullet points that basically are there to calm investors. They say, yes, we do know, we are aware that there is competition from Disney and Amazon and Hulu and everybody else, but Netflix is better. They point out that Netflix has three to four times the level of engagement of these other platforms, and they are pointing out that competitors like Disney and Amazon are losing money according to Netflix's estimates on their streaming service, while Netflix is now profitable. And then Netflix says, after a challenging first half, we believe we're on a path to re-accelerate growth. The key is pleasing members. And hey, the total numbers of members grew for Netflix, which is mainly why investors got very excited. After falling in Q1 and in Q2, Netflix memberships grew again by 2.4 million users. And Netflix is forecasting the next quarter users will grow by 4.5 million, which sounds great, but there is a problem. Seeing as user numbers are hitting record levels, why is revenue 
forecasted to be lower? And why is net income forecasted to be barely break even? Well, there are a few potential reasons. First up, Netflix said that their revenue numbers were impacted by the strengthening of the dollar, and they expect that to continue in Q4. All the money that Netflix earns outside the United States is worth less in dollars today than it was a few months ago. If you exclude the change in foreign currency, revenue for Netflix would have grown by 13% instead of 6 There is a problem though. These numbers are year-on-year -year numbers, so we are comparing Q3 this year to Q3 last year. And since Q3 last year, Netflix has increased prices. In January this year, Netflix increased prices in the US. The standard plan went from $14 to $15.50, a 10.7% increase. The 4K plan went from $18 to $20, an 11.1% increase. And the basic plan increased from $9 to $10, also an 11.1% increase. So the prices went up 11%. In the UK and Europe, prices went up even more in March, more like 14 to 17% up, partly offsetting the shift in the foreign currency exchange rates there. But then the average revenue per user has only gone up by 1% for Netflix. And of course, they're blaming the exchange rates, although they have increased prices outside the US by more than inside the US to compensate. And they have a breakdown of the pricing by region further down in the Q3 results. And this is where I think investors should be looking because the numbers in here don't look as pretty as the stuff further up. Because you can see that the US and Canada user growth has pretty much stopped. They've got to 73 million subscribers, and it looks like they may be hitting a wall, a complete level of saturation, because if you consider that a typical household, a typical subscriber probably has at least two or three people in the household, on average, and maybe shares their account with some other people, then almost everyone in the US already has access. Europe and the Middle East, not quite as saturated, but growth in user numbers this quarter was less than the drop last quarter. Total user numbers are lower now than they were in Q4 last year. The only region that's really adding users is Asia Pacific, but Asia Pacific is also the region where the average revenue per user is dropping. Even if you take out the foreign exchange impact. Look, they keep adding users, but their revenue is falling. So what gives? In Asia, it appears that there is a substitution effect going on. Users are downgrading their subscriptions, and while some users on more expensive memberships cancel, they are then replaced with more users who are choosing the cheaper packages instead. And look, average revenue per membership in the US and Canada increased 12% year on year. Well, no shit. When you've just increased prices by 11% roughly a few months ago. In Europe, Average revenue per membership only increased by 7% on a FX neutral basis. That's half as much as the increase in prices. So from where I am sitting, the only thing that's keeping Netflix revenues afloat is the massive jacking of prices. And if I was an investor in Netflix, this would be a problem to me. The standard plan is already $15.50 in the US, and it's $20 for the 4K plan. And yeah, 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 inflation means that all prices are going up. I get it. But Netflix comes a whole lot further down the pecking order for spending priorities than things like food and rent, especially in a cost of living crisis, and those are going up by about 13% at the moment. So looking at these numbers by Netflix, if I was to take out the impact of the massive price increases, Netflix revenues are actually falling a lot. Can Netflix do another 12 or 15% increase to the price plans in the next few months? What about the year after? Is Netflix going to go to $30 a month? Are we going to be seeing $40 a month? Well, in the results, Netflix is saying, over the medium term, we believe we can adjust our pricing and cost structure for a stronger US dollar world. So price increases outside the US are pretty much guaranteed and probably sooner rather than later, even though they only came in a few months ago in the UK and Europe. Our long-term goal remains unchanged to sustain double-digit revenue growth. Well, based on the numbers that they are showing, the only way they are going to hit it is by jacking up prices every year. And what do you think is going to happen to the subscriber numbers while they're doing that? Because remember, their forecast for Q4 is to barely break even. And actually, there is this little statement here that is really telling. Part of the reason that net income in Q3 was better than expected is because a load of costs 
costs that they expected to incur in Q3 have just been delayed to Q4. And also the fourth quarter is typically our lowest operating margin quarter of the year and it's usually our largest quarter in terms of content and marketing spend. And this for me is an issue with the long-term outlook for the business. In the past, a content business like what Netflix is would usually have the benefit of building up a long-term tail on a catalog of content. You make the content, you put it out into the world and you earn money that month, the next month, the next year, for the next few years, for the next few decades. Look at Disney, for example. The business model for Netflix though is very different. A lot of the money being spent on content only really provides a relatively short-term revenue push. You make a big budget movie that costs you $200 million and you're making most of your revenue in that first few weeks and then puff, it's gone. The system is much more of a hamster wheel which you have to keep spinning. And if you stop spinning it, the users are going to depart in double time. Especially now that the competition is becoming a lot more serious, there's a lot more alternative options, but Netflix is expecting to add 4.5 million users in Q4, but only because they will be spending a ton of money on advertising and content and their revenue is not going up. So they're expecting to add a bunch of users either on this new ad based platform, which they're not expecting to earn any revenue from or onto cheaper plans or people substituting down to cheaper plans. And as a result, they're expecting to make pretty much no profit. And however you decide to value Netflix as a business, how do you build a robust risk assessment around the future revenue? Use because that's where the problem sits for me. Does Netflix have a moat on content production? Sure, they are getting good at it. They have made The Crown, Stranger Things, Ozark, House of Cards, all produced by Netflix. But how do you assess the risk of the hamster wheel slowing down? if not stopping spinning. I look at the balance sheet and I see $6.1 billion in cash and another $2.7 billion in unspecified current assets. And then further down, I see liabilities at $7.8 billion and another $13.9 billion sitting in long-term debt. So if the wheel was to stop spinning or slow down somewhat, we might have a problem. Now, the debt position has improved marginally this year. You can see that the $700 million of short-term debt has gone away, and the long-term debt has also reduced by $800 million. Netflix, though, is valued at $120 billion dollars and is expected to hit a net income of sub five billion dollars this year. So a PE of around 25 and some people say, well, that's kind of reasonable, but this is a company where the only growth we are seeing is currently coming from jacking up prices. And there's actually a real pressure on user numbers and everything else. The growth in revenue is not coming from increasing the number of sales. It is not coming from some kind of innovation, from coming up with better additional products, expanding into adjacent business opportunities, it's coming from churning the hamster wheel where Netflix forecasts double digit revenue growth that seems to be entirely based on increasing prices. And for me, I just don't like the optics on the business for that reason and don't see an organic upside there that matches the level of risk, which is why I don't hold a position in Netflix. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys later.